Quick question, is there anyone out there that has more than 35 savings accounts? At the risk of sounding a little bit OCD, that's how many I have. And to be clear, over 25 of those are at one bank. So why do I have so many checking accounts? Well, years ago, I read about paying yourself first. The idea is you put a little bit of money aside for your goals and for your dreams, even if it's a single dollar. So for me, I had a number of accounts that I created basically for my dream home. I knew that I wanted to save up for a new vehicle. I started having kids, so five kids, and actually I have two accounts for each of them, one for college, another one just for general savings. Now, the way it works is I've got a master checking account, and that's where all of my payments go into when I pay myself. And then every single month, I have a small amount that goes into each of these savings accounts. And when I say small amount, initially it started off like five bucks, then I increased it to 25 to 50, it really depends on the account. Some accounts I'm now putting in over $1,000 a month that, yeah, are going towards goals that are important to me. And as I kept doing this, the number of accounts kept increasing. So I had vacation accounts. I had traveling to Ukraine accounts. You guys know I'm married to a Ukrainian. We go there pretty much every year except for, you know, this year. But we did go last year, thank goodness. And, uh, you know, just other things like vehicle repairs. All of a sudden, you know, we started getting some animals. So I started making sure we've actually got money that we put aside for the vet bill that we know is going to pop up. I realized for my dream home, I needed to first actually buy land. So I created a land account. We've got multiple emergency accounts. We've got medical bills, tax accounts because I got a property tax bill now that I've paid off my home. As a result of automating paying myself first, over a period of eight years, I was able to make substantial progress towards saving for my dreams. Also, you know, those expenses that oftentimes deplete your accounts or make you go into credit card debt. I was putting aside money for those, so it wasn't a big deal. It was just expected. We were already putting that aside. Now, my checking account, I kept at a, you know, a certain balance, and if it ever went above, I had that excess put into these other savings accounts to accelerate them. And I was automatically going in and increasing the amount that we were putting aside as I started to earn more. Now, this next obscure money hack is one that most people aren't doing, and that's monitoring the dark web for your financial information. Seriously, the fastest growing crime in America is identity theft. Every 14 seconds, somebody is becoming a victim. And that's why, gents, I'm proud to bring you today's sponsor, Aura. And for me, what makes Aura awesome is all of the features they've got here. So, not just identity theft protection, but also fraud monitoring, a VPN and password management system, antivirus software, all in one easy to use app. I know one of the worst fears I have is I go into my email and I can't access it. And all of a sudden, I start getting notifications that this account has changed, that this account has changed, that they are somehow into my checking accounts, my savings accounts, my crypto. And despite, you know, having these in kind of separate islands, it's a fear if somebody gets access to certain bits of information, if I was lazy, that they'll be able to go in and change all this with, with Aura, you're able to get notified quickly that this is starting to happen so that you can take the immediate steps to fix the problem. And the way they're doing this is they're being proactive. They're going out there on the dark web and they're monitoring. They're looking for your information, your emails, your passwords, your social security number, and they will send you an alert very quickly right to your phone or email as soon as they detect it. And let's talk about that VPN. Guys, if you're traveling abroad or you're just visiting your local coffee shop, you may not know that that signal can be intercepted. If you're not familiar with what VPNs are, basically they provide an encryption tunnel that your information can go through and other people can't penetrate and steal your passwords, steal your information. And on top of all that, they've got antivirus software that's going to block malware and viruses before they infect your device. Now, you may remember I've worked with Aura before and last time they found my information on the dark web six times. Well, since then, they found it again and uh, again, they notified me whenever a credit card, there was suspicious activity. Absolutely love what this app is doing. This right here, guys, is a lifesaver. So, to get started today, gents, go to the link in the description of today's video, that's Aura.com slash RMRS and you're going to get the first two weeks, 14 days free when you download the app. Aura is an amazing app. I use it. I personally just absolutely love this app, guys, if you can't tell. So, again, use that link in the description of today's video to get the best deal on the web and to try it for free for 14 days. That's Aura.com slash RMRS. <laughs> Now, some of you guys may be saying with that first hack, well, my bank doesn't do that. Well, guess what? The next hack is to go look at other banks. I've got seven banks that I work with and I've looked at a lot more than that. Those are the seven that I've decided to stick with over the years. Three of them are online virtual banks. 
Four of them are, you know, more classic brick and mortar banks. But what I've discovered is that banks are very different. A lot of people think they're pretty uniform, but they are so different in the services and the deals that they offer you as a customer. So one of the banks I work with has a branch 800 meters from my house. I can walk over there and pull out cash when I need it. But when it comes to their online interface, it really is not that good. They also charge foreign transaction fees. So I don't use them whenever I'm making purchases abroad. Another bank is really great online. It's just amazing customer service. I also like how they, they're the one that actually has the multiple savings accounts, but they are locally based and they really don't have anything when it comes international. And again, if I use their cards abroad, they're going to get rejected. So I've got another bank that is amazing abroad, but they don't have any physical branches, but they're really great if you're just going to simply be scanning checks and sending it to them. I've got another bank that I love to do all of my business transactions with. That being said, I I've got another one just in case this one we're going to have some issues. I've got a backup business transaction bank. And I've also got those online banks when I'm just simply PayPal. I mean, people may not consider them a bank, but I do because, you know, they move money and they're just great when it comes down to being able to receive funds. My point here is when you work with multiple banks, you're able to compare Apple's to apples. Just the other day, I bought a new vehicle and I needed to get a loan. So I just go to all the banks I'm already working with and I say, I'm buying this new vehicle. What is the interest rate? What are you going to be able to give me for this loan? And there was a huge difference in the banks and what they were able to offer. And I went with the best deal. So the next uncommon money hack I want to talk about is getting and increasing the amount of credit that you have with your existing credit cards and getting those interest rates down. So when I went through a bankruptcy, this was well over a decade ago, it destroyed my credit. I lost all my credit cards and rightfully so. Uh, I was a bad spender and that's why I've got a lot of these systems in place. But the first card I got was a secured card for 500 bucks from my local bank. I still have that credit card, but now I've got $4,000 in credit with them. It's not secured anymore. And the interest rate, instead of being like 25%, is now uh, well under, I think, 7 or 8%. I did this step by step. And I also, I'll talk about why I kept that credit card a little bit later. But this one, I remember, I've just gone back to them probably seven or eight times over the years. And it's a small amount that they increase every time. And the big thing was actually getting it from being secured. And in case you're not familiar, secured credit cards are where you actually have cash with the bank. It's not really a credit card. It's almost like a debit card. But point B, being is we changed this and it was like me going back five or seven times. Every time my credit score would go up a bit higher, I knew that I had a bit of negotiation. Every time I could show, hey, for two years, I've paid this off every single month. I went in there and slowly we made those improvements. Now, the cool part here is how this affects your mindset. When you see this going up, you actually do this with your other credit cards. So once my credit score had improved, it had been a number of years since my bankruptcy, I actually, I went and got an American Express. And I think I had a credit with them of about $10,000 a credit line. But now I've increased that to $50,000 over the last few years. And the reason I did that is, you know, when I hit on, you want to have credit before you need it. It's not like I'm going out and maxing every single month that $50,000 line, but I love that I've actually got that at my disposal. Once you have that relationship with the card, you show consistently that you pay it off every single month or that you at least make your payments. They are willing to, hey, look at your history, negotiate with you. As you see your credit score increases, you're able to go to them and say, hey, you know, I'm at 10,000. Can we increase this to 20,000? And that's a lot easier for a company instead of just issuing you a brand new card because you're also building time with the card. And that's another important thing for your credit score in case you don't know, is that the longer you are paying and you are working with a particular account, the age of your accounts matters a lot. Generally, you want them to be over four to six years. And while we're talking about credit cards, let's talk about fees. And you see this with your banking statements as well. So go through your banking fees and don't be afraid to call them up and to ask, hey, yes, I understand that you charged me this $17 fee for this, but uh, this was the first time this happened. Maybe you had an overdraft. Maybe you didn't realize that pulling money out of that particular ATM, they would also charge you, you know, five bucks, 10 bucks for that. Go and simply ask for them to refund. And I find a lot of times when it's your first offense, they will refund it to you. Or, you know, it may come down to, hey, actually this, why was I charged this? I found one credit card uh, was charging me a lot of foreign transaction fees. And it turns out that that was just simply the way it was. They were not going to negotiate on that. So I moved 
all of those automated transactions to a different card that not charge me a foreign transaction fee. And it wasn't a crazy amount. It was like a total of like 15 bucks for three to four different uh, charges that were happening every single month. But I mean, add that up. I mean, over the period of a year, and that's the way to look at this is that's 20 bucks every single month for a year, that would have been 240 bucks. Go with that philosophy, it becomes a game almost. Those small you know, leaks are gonna sink a great ship. I think that was what Benjamin Franklin said that. So approach it that way. And I love going through my, my, my uh, statements, both for my credit cards and for my banking statements, looking for little things that I can argue on. I've become that weird person that likes to call up and argue about this and try to get that five to 10 to 15 bucks back. It's not about, you know, I know my time is very valuable, but for me, it almost becomes entertainment and a game to be able to see if I can get that back. And I hold that to people on my team, especially if they're managing that credit card that, hey, you need to be going after every single penny. And I may have said this earlier, but one thing that I try to stick with is go to where you are best treated. So again, if you're working with numerous banks, you've got numerous credit cards, actually look at the one that you're using, which which one has rewards that actually you make good use of. I've got one that, you know, it's great if I go out to a lot of restaurants, I get, you know, act like three times the points on it, but I rarely ever use it. So instead, I go with the one that actually gives me Marriott points because I do travel a lot with my family. And it's really nice when we are able to just simply use hotel points and be able to stay at all these hotels around the world. So I found that that is the card that I'm going to predominantly have most of my, you know, payments going through because I'm building up those points, which I'll actually use. So always think, hey, wherever you are best treated, make sure to give them your business. That being said, make sure to look at this every year because anyone that was getting airline points years ago, you know that it just seems to get worse and worse when it comes to the airlines and you've got to, yeah, what was great, you know, just a, you know, a few years ago isn't necessarily good now. Next up, let's talk about insurance. This is one that a lot of people don't think about because you don't need it on a daily basis. You rarely use insurance and when you do, you want it to cover you, right? So make sure that you are not going with the bare minimums. A lot of times when companies sign you up, especially if they've got you in with a low price guarantee, you want to look at what you're covered for. I know when it comes to vehicle insurance, I have maxed out pretty much, I, I get way beyond what my state requires. And the reason being is when you start going out there and you look at this, you realize that I'm taking a huge risk, especially if you own your own home. If you actually have assets that can be taken away from you, you want to make sure it doesn't cost a whole lot. It does not raise your insurance that much to all of a sudden ha start having a lot more coverage to make sure that you've got coverage in case you hit somebody that's uninsured. It, what would happen if your vehicle were to hit, you know, three Mercedes and a, I don't know, uh, three Teslas all at the same time and you are responsible for that? Do you also have umbrella coverage. This is something most people don't even think about, but umbrella coverage, it covers a lot of the, the holes. And if you've got your own business, if you're working from home, if you're a contractor, do you have business insurance? I've got that now in my office, but I've also got, you know, like, coverage for, you know, this channel as well, because you start thinking of all the risks that you've got out there. As you start to have children, um, you have other people, maybe you get married, you have people that are dependent on you. Maybe you're, you're, somebody comes to live with you that you're taking care of. All of a sudden you realize, hey, I want to make sure that I've got life insurance. So you start looking at all these things and it's important that uh, you don't skimp here. And it's something again, that we don't think about until something happens to us and then it's too late. And I'm not trying to overcomplicate things here, but I am saying if you make it a game, this can be really fun. Did you know your credit cards? A lot of them, you want to actually check with your credit card. Whenever you go out and you purchase a camera, you purchase that iPhone. Yes, it comes with a one year warranty, but if you used a particular card, maybe an American Express, did you know it doubles the length of that warranty. So American Express now is covering this for you. If you're renting a car, your own car insurance should cover you. You shouldn't have to buy that extra insurance when it comes to travel insurance. Anytime you buy, you know that now they're getting you, hey, pay an extra 30 something, 40 something bucks and we'll cover it. Well, guess what? You probably already have that coverage with the credit card you're using to purchase this. Now, you want to verify, not every credit card has this, but there are many of them, especially if you have a higher end credit card uh, with a very reputable company, you'll find that they will give you travel insurance, that your car, your, your rental car, you are covered not only by your insurance with 
your own vehicle, but the insurance that comes with that credit card that you made the purchase with. Now, these next tips are actually really practical. I think you could use them pretty much every day. Uh, whenever you go into a store and you buy something, play the game of trying to guess the amount that everything in your cart is going to cost. I've actually, I do this with my kids and they try to guess amounts and you will not believe how many times you are overcharged at checkout, sometimes undercharged as well. So it's actually kind of fun for me to point out that you didn't charge me for this because I try to be, you know, an honorable person. But uh, just the other day, I'm at my local feed store. I've got chickens and we, we got animals. So I'm picking up all this food and I know, I mean, the amount could not have been more than $70 and it was 87 bucks. I'm like, what's going on here? And the guy didn't catch anything. He actually had to reset it. And of course, it was well under 70 bucks. I knew what it had. I mean, he had charged somehow something else had gotten on there. He charged me twice. He didn't see it until he went through and redid it, but I knew the numbers in my head. Also, whenever, you know, obviously you can't do this when you're doing maybe, well, some of you guys probably can, when you've got 100, 200 things in your checkout, which I sometimes do when I go to uh, certain stores buying lots of food, but I do go through and I will look at the receipt before I leave. And I am that person, I'm sorry if you're behind me, that I spend 30 seconds, 45 seconds, quickly looking at everything. And when I'm putting things in the checkout, I like to put them together in groups. That way I can see if I bought six milks, which I do because I've got 11 people in my house and we go through that in a week and a lot of older boys, they just love that milk. Point being is I can see that I should be paying for six milks, not 42 avocados, which happened to me a while back. And avocados are expensive here in the United States, They're like $1.52 bucks each. I was like, what in the world is going on? I knew I'd only gotten six of them, not 42. And yes, people make these mistakes. And if you're not paying attention, you can walk right out of that store. And then it becomes an issue when it was just one thing you were overcharged for, for like five bucks. You don't want to go back in. But when you're right there, you can quickly point that out and they can make make the correction right there. And I talked earlier about going through statements, but again, those banking statements are key because you're going to notice, why do I keep getting charged for this? So I noticed I was getting charged by Boomerang and you may be familiar if you've got kids. This is one of those channels that somehow I was subscribed to it on Amazon and I was subscribed to it through one of my credit cards. I was getting double charged and it turns out my kids love it. And for some reason we weren't able to log in one day and I all of a sudden remember doing this. I resubscribed thinking that I was subscribing for the first time using their direct service and and I was basically double subscribed and I realized as well that we hadn't even watched anything here for like two to three months. So if you like the movie The Purge, do this with your credit card and your banking statements. You want to go through, do it realistically once every six months. I go through and I'm like, oh my gosh, like why have we been paying for this subscription service? Uh, we've got one, I mean, I thought I was smart. During the winter, we get a lot of really bad weather here. So I've got three vehicles now. I did a subscription car wash and we're going through and we were using it almost every day in the winter. Your car gets covered in grime and salt and it was just good for the vehicles. But now it's warm, it's summertime. We're only going through that car wash maybe two to three times a month. So I need to unsubscribe from this because it doesn't make sense. And remember, you can always resubscribe. They love to have you come back. And uh, yeah, it, it's just find a way. Yeah, get off of those subscriptions. And what video to watch next? Well, how about this time that my identity was stolen? This is actually pretty recent. We had a guy out there who was claiming to be Antonio Centeno and was, yeah, actually contacting companies, stealing things, and it ruined my online reputation, which I still don't think it's fully recovered. But I talk about that story right here, guys, and uh, I thought it was pretty interesting. You, yeah, check it out, guys. It's a good video, and uh, that's it. Take care. And yes, when you magic, when you click this, you will magically be transported to another video. It's, it's cool how that happens.